Today we're gathered district attorneys from seven counties within the Diocese of Syracuse and Bishop Cunningham was gracious enough to come down. I'm going to do a quick introduction so you know who's at the table. Uh, Greg Oaks from Oswego, where my son went to college. Joe McBride from Shenango County. Bishop Cunningham, obviously. The illustrious Bill Fitzpatrick from Onondaga and Mark Subin from Portland. So the, the purpose of today's gathering is to announce that all of the seven counties within uh, the diocese have signed a memorandum of understanding with the Diocese of Syracuse, which is not, in some ways, an earth-shattering document, but what it is is a formalizing of a process that we have agreed upon with the bishop as to how all allegations of child abuse dealing with clergy or religious future and past will be handled as far as being referred to the appropriate police agency and or district attorney. So you're going to get a copy of the memorandum and you'll be able to see that it I think just puts in writing the fact that we agree that when information comes to the diocese that they will make sure that any future investigative steps are handled by police and criminal investigators and secondly that there's an assurance which exists now and I'm going to and Bill Fitzpatrick will talk and explain that in more detail that there's no possibility that any person currently with the diocese in any position with children poses any risk in any way to uh, kids so I'm going to uh, turn it over to Bishop Cunningham first to talk a little bit about it or, or Bill you're going to go next yeah. Uh, Bill Fitzpatrick, the uh, district attorney from Onondaga County. Yep. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, uh, let me thank Jerry Mullen, who is uh, not only president of the State DA's Association, but has also uh, lent his leadership to this particular group. And I want to uh, point out that Scott McNamara, uh, unfortunately, was tied up in traffic, and uh, Bill Gaber is involved in a criminal matter, but both of those uh, individuals are signatories to the uh, Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, about a year ago, uh, my office was contacted by a survivor, and after dialogue uh, to some extent with him, uh, I contacted my colleagues, uh, asked Jerry to take the lead on this, and we began the process of discussing this with the diocese uh, as to how we could formalize some of the agreements that we have had uh, verbally discussed in the past. And I want to thank, uh, in addition to Jerry, I want to thank Maureen Maney, who is here, uh, and she is an attorney who represents the diocese, and she has been uh, outstanding in helping us get to the point where we are today. Um, Jerry made a very, very important point. The Bishop Cunningham has, uh, since he has been uh, in charge of this uh, diocese, uh, very cooperative with my office and with my six colleagues uh, throughout upstate New York. Uh, anytime we have asked for information, we have been provided that. And as I stand here today, I tell you that there is no potential offender who is presenting any danger to any child in central New York. The bishop is uh, very, very, very concerned about that when we talked about it. And uh, as Jerry said, that is something that we all have come to an understanding about. The memorandum of understanding is uh, very short. It's very precise. It's uh, as clear cut as it could be. And it essentially makes the Diocese of Syracuse a, a mandatory reporter for any potential sexual abuse. The complaint will be reported immediately to the appropriate district attorney's office. The uh, age of the allegation is irrelevant. If it's beyond the statute of limitations, the matter will still be referred 
to the appropriate DA's office. The diocese will, if confronted with this situation, make efforts to preserve any evidence that may be necessary for potential criminal inv investigation. The diocese has agreed that they will not initially do their own independent investigation. Leave it to the professionals, the DA's offices and the police in the various jurisdictions. And lastly, we have all acknowledged that the diocese under canon law has its own responsibilities. This is a, a, a huge step forward. Uh, it's something probably that should be copied throughout the rest of the state and throughout the rest of the country. And I uh, sincerely appreciate, again, Jerry's leadership, the collaboration uh, of my colleagues throughout Central New York, uh, Maureen Maney and her assistants, uh, and especially uh, someone who I uh, have come to know over the last several years and who I believe is as committed and serious about this issue as he could possibly be. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to him right now, and that's uh, Bishop Robert Cunningham. Bishop, thank you, Vince. Good afternoon. I'm grateful to Mr. Mullen and Mr. Fitzpatrick and all of our district attorneys in the seven counties of our diocese who have signed this memorandum of understanding. Today is a good news story. And I echo what Mr. Fitzpatrick said. It's an agreement that's been almost a year in the making. Why, you may ask. Over the course of time, the diocese has had a verbal agreement with the area district attorneys that goes back about 12 years. In light of a few changes in our elected officials across the counties, and in a need to review and improve our procedures, we agreed that it would be good to modify our agreement and put it in writing. As it says in the memo, it creates a consistent set of reporting procedures across the diocese, and it makes it better for everyone. This is truly in a spirit of cooperation and guided by one principle, to deal with this issue effectively and justly, and most importantly, to make every effort to ensure that no child is harmed. It's no secret that there are people who are unhappy with me and with the Diocese of Syracuse. Let me be clear and state again on the record, I do not believe nor have I ever believed a child is responsible for being abused. A priest or any other adult who abuses a child is wrong. I apologize if my words have caused pain to victims of sexual abuse. I acknowledge that the church and frankly society has not handled situations of child abuse well in the past. We're a human church and a human society who make mistakes and it pains me to know that mistakes have caused harm to people. Thankfully, there has been much improvement. We are proud of the ongoing education and prevention efforts in maintaining safe environments in the Diocese of Syracuse. Since 2003, over 35,000 individuals, including clergy, religious, employees, and all volunteers who work with young people, have been educated and trained in child abuse prevention and have completed criminal background checks. Today's a great step forward to further our collective efforts to eradicate this issue and to keep our children safe. Again, I thank the area district attorneys for their help, and we hope that our combined efforts will provide even more protection for our young people. And I'm proud to stand with the district attorneys and say that. Thank you very much. We are going to open it up for questions. So if you have questions, direct them, and the appropriate person hopefully will answer. Mr. Mello, in 2002, there was a new policy implemented, and you expressed concerns back then that it didn't, wasn't strong enough because of the lack of a requirement that law enforcement what changed and what, did you have to overcome any um, opposition to this to get this implemented? Things do change, obviously. 
the bishop has been very open to new situations and new information. Bill Fitzpatrick explained the dynamics of things that happened over the past year, but I don't think there's any protocol. I'll say this, in my office, the protocols we have in 2015 dealing with investigating cases or what you record in the way of suspect interviews or gang intelligence, what, nothing is the same now as it was then. So I can say this, that this memorandum we feel proud of and, and, and we've reached agreement on it and the bishop has been fully supportive of it. So are things different now than they were then? Of course. Is it safe to say that, because I know, Fitzpatrick, you mentioned that you got a call a year ago from a victim and then you started making calls. Was that what sparked this? I'll let Bill yes. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can you say more about that? About what that, I, that I, case is? I, I, John, I don't have his, uh, I don't have the individual's permission to use his name. Uh, if I get that, uh, Today, I'll forward it to you. Without using the name, what, what, what was about that case that it, made you it, it, was, at the mic? Is yeah, I'm sorry. It was a, a young man who uh, got into some legal difficulty out of state, and in explaining to the local authorities uh, why it was that he may have behaved the way he did, I won't go into the, uh, the charges because I don't think he's been uh, uh, convicted of anything. Um, he began to disclose uh, instances that had happened to him within my jurisdiction that were clearly barred by the statute of limitations. Uh, Rick Trumfio, my chief deputy, uh, got into a very lengthy dialogue with that individual, and when I contacted uh, Jerry and my uh, fellow DAs, we agreed that it would be appropriate time to memorialize an understanding of how these cases should be handled in the future so that something terrible that like such as what happened to this man uh, would never happen again and by the way his offender is deceased yes why did the bishop now agree as your side why did you finally agree to this well what i agreed to was basically what we had been following all along but we had no written uh, agreement there had been a verbal agreement that went back to 2003 and we, we pretty much followed that agreement. We did follow that agreement. And at this time, we thought that with, uh, you know, bishops change, district attorneys change, it would be good for the future if we formalized our agreement in writing. And we were happy to do that, and we came together and uh, worked on it. Are there any cases that have not been reported? Oh. No, the district attorneys are aware of the cases that we have in the diocese. Does this mean the 11 names will be released? No, it doesn't. We will have the relationship with the district attorney's office. Uh, it's, it's a well-known fact that I have not listed, as some dioceses have, the names of all of those who have offended. I don't think that it's beneficial. Uh, there's no priest in uh, any type of ministry in the Diocese of Syracuse who has any type of credible allegation against him, and uh, that's the way it is. Thank you. 